What up foodie friends? Hope everyone has been keeping well. I know it's actually been a really long time since I have done a product review or a video. So I'm happy to be back and today we're doing a product review of a no shoe, 99% sugar free chocolate brownie mix. What I like about this one is it's specifically catered for diabetics. Um, and so it's made with no sugar, including refined, um, non-refined sugars. Because obviously if you're diabetic, it doesn't matter if the sugar's natural or not, it's still sugar and it's still gonna spike your blood sugars. So this uses a natural sweetener, which is good because it doesn't include chemicals. So my first impressions here of this is the packaging, is the first thing you see. So I really like that it's nice and bright and colorful. It's really clean and fresh and modern. It's actually really easy to kind of read everything and find all the information you want to see, including the instructions. If we look over here on the side, it's got our ingredients and our nutritional information. So our ingredients are pretty, seem pretty good. It's just gluten-free and grain-free flour. Um, just a mix of chickpea flour, tapioca starch, and navy bean flour. Then just pretty much got cocoa powder, and stevia leaf extract, and the other sweetener it uses is erythritol. Um, so that seems not too bad, and the carbs, it says right on the front, is five grams of carbs per serve, which is awesome, and one serve apparently is 29 grams, which is about one brownie. Cool, so we're basically gonna get this out of the box, uh, make it up following the instructions to see how easy it is, see how well it bakes, and see what it tastes like and everything. Uh, I will also note that it doesn't actually very clearly say in the box that you can make this vegan, but you can. If you look over on the side over here, very small down the bottom, it says don't use powdered egg replacer. So powdered egg replacer is something that I have used quite a lot in the past, so I won't be using that in this. And then it directs you to their website to find the egg-free recipe option. So I have already gone to their website and found the egg-free version. And to be honest, it was really hard to find. There's no obvious kind of spot. I had to look under um, vegan recipes and then scroll and scroll and scroll until I found um, basically this recipe, egg-free. And the annoying thing is, it's not just the recipe for the egg, to replace the egg here, it's actually like a whole different recipe, which is similar, but it does have different quantities to what's on this box. So kind of frustrating, so I'm actually not gonna be able to use this recipe to make it vegan, I'm gonna to have to look at the recipe online on my phone. So keep that in mind, if you are gonna make it vegan, don't follow these quantities. Go on their website and try and find it, it is kind of annoying. But anyway, we will have a go and we'll make it up and see what it's like. Cool, so we're all ready to make our brownies. So I've gone onto my phone and on the No Shoe website. So there's actually two um, egg, vegan egg replacer versions of this recipe. There's one which is made from black beans and there's one which is made from chia seeds. Uh, it says on the website that the black bean version is gonna give you a more cakey and airy brownie and the chia seed version is gonna give you a more fudgy version. So I'm using chia seeds because I don't, I've used them in baking before and I like using chia seeds and um, they're also lower carb and I do want a fudgy brownie. The difference here is it tells you we need one box of the no shoe sugar-free brownie mix plus we need two tablespoons, tablespoons of ground chia seeds. So I've already ground that up. Um, we also need some warm water, some baking powder, which seems kind of odd to me because I feel like why is there not baking powder included in the dry mix? And I don't really understand why you only need that if we're using egg replacer. But anyway, I'm just gonna do what the recipe says. And the other thing it says is 80 grams of melted oil. So I'm just using coconut oil and I've already melted um, 80 grams, which is about one third of a cup. They're ready to go. And then basically we just mix all of that together. So let's go ahead and do that. looks 
really good. You can also, it says in the box that you can add like chocolate chips or walnuts or something, but I'm just leaving it as is. And then you just need a 20 by 20 centimeter um, brownie tin, and then it goes in the oven. So now I'm gonna get my brownie tin ready and put in the brownie mixture. So it does say you need a 20 by 20 centimeter brownie tin and to line it with paper. So I'm just gonna use some baking paper and do that. Um, also FYI on the box, it does actually give you like little tips for if you're using a smaller tin or a larger tin. So that's pretty handy in case you don't have the right size. But uh, this is a 20 by 20. So our brownie went into the oven for 30 minutes, just as the packet instructions said. Um, there were actually no kind of instructions on how to know if it's ready. So I just put it in for the time it said, which was half an hour. Um, and it's been cooling for about one hour, so it's nice and cool now. Um, so now we're gonna take it out of the tin and cut it and see what it's like. So. So it looks like a brownie, it smells like a brownie. All good signs. So from cutting it, it seems nice and kind of hard on the top, but really gooey and kind of sticky in the middle. So I'm unsure if that's good or not. So this is what it looks, oh, it's really flat. Ridic it's like ridiculously flat. I don't know how, how well you can kind of see. But it, it like there's like no no rise to it at all. Um, yeah, so that, that's what it's like. We'll taste it, I guess, and see what it's like. When you pull it apart, it does have a brownie like texture, which is good. Um, the flavour is really good. It's nice and chocolatey and um, quite rich. Um, the texture is okay, like the top is nice and crunchy. However, it's actually kind of sticky, like on your teeth, it kind of sticks to your teeth, which isn't very nice. And it's really oily, like I can see so much oil coming off of my hand, just holding it. So yeah, honestly, it's it's okay. I mean, considering it's gluten-free and sugar-free, like it doesn't taste weird, it's just kind of sticky, which I'm thinking might be from the sweetener. Um, and yeah, there's like no rise to it whatsoever, so it's super flat, which I'm not a huge fan of. But like, if you do want something super easy to whip up and take somewhere where you need to bring a dessert or something, that's gonna to cater to multiple dietary requirements, then I suppose that is a good option. And it's not bad, it's about $8 for the, um, for the box, it was about $8, so it's not too bad. Let's give it some ratings. I'm gonna start with the packaging and we're gonna rate this out of 10. So I quite like the packaging, I like that it's nice and bright and clean and easy to read. Um, the only thing I didn't like is that it's not super obvious from the box that there is a way to make this vegan. The only way that you can kind of tell is really small down here, it tells you about an egg replacement, but that's kind of it. But I suppose also their thing isn't vegan, their thing is sugar-free. So I think I'm gonna give the packaging a nine out of 10. In terms of ingredients, I really like that it's really allergen friendly. It's gluten-free, sugar-free, nut-free. And most of the ingredients kind of make sense. You know, they're all kind of ingredients that you sort of know. And like I said, the carbs are low, only five grams per piece. 
So I think I'm gonna also give that a nine out of 10 for ingredients. Okay, and then the next thing I'm gonna look at is like ease of making and what the instructions were like. Uh, I really didn't like that to find a vegan, um, you know, non-egg version. You had to go to the website and it was really not obvious where to look and that, that was quite complicated and then you had to follow a whole different recipe which is similar but not quite the same as on the box so it kind of defeats the purpose of having the recipe right here super handy. Um, however, if you do use the box, the box is really easy to read and um, even though I did have to go on the website, once you get to the website and you eventually find the recipe, it is a really easy recipe to make. You just chuck everything in a bowl and whisk it together. So I think I'm going to give instructions and ease of making maybe a 6 out of 10. Um, that, like I said, that would be different if you're not making a vegan version. And of course, most importantly, I am going to rate the overall final product. So that includes the, like, the taste and the texture. It, uh, it looks good, to be honest. It looks like a brownie on top. I like that it was crunchy on the outside and fudgy on the middle. Didn't like that it didn't rise. Didn't like that it had a kind of sticky texture. I think I'm gonna give the overall rating of it probably also a six out of 10. But do go try it for yourself. It is fairly easy to make. Um, it is gluten free and sugar free and you can make it vegan so it's really easy to appeal to a lot of people. And maybe the black bean egg replacer version is better. So maybe also go ahead and try that. And they do have a few other products in their range. Have a try of their stuff, or if you have already, let me know in the comments what you think of their um, baking kits, and enjoy. Enjoy eating easy baking. Cool. <laughs> Thanks guys, we'll, we'll see you next time.